Hey guys, it's Chris from Nichols Retirement Empire. Today we're visiting Fort McAllister, which is south of Savannah across the Ogeechee River and was part of the Civil War and Sherman's March to the Sea. And uh, it is near where I live in Richmond Hill. So it's about a 50 minute drive if you want to go down from Savannah to visit this area. And of course, it's a beautiful state park here in the state of Georgia and a state historic park. Now the first thing you see is a pavilion that has parts from the CSS Nashville, which was a blockade runner that was sank by the USS Ironclad Montauk uh, right out here on the Ogeechee River. And so they have all of these parts from the engine that they dug up out of the river. And you can see it was a very large ship and uh, how it was constructed, how the engine worked, and these are the pieces that they have out there. Now they had a lot of artifacts here. I was really impressed with the number of artifacts and most of the artifacts were from the site itself. There was also a museum on site and it was a very nice little museum again with tons of artifacts that are authentic from this site and you could also see the Ogeechee River from here. I'll show you that here in a few minutes. And there's a campground here for RV, uh, RVs and things like that that tons of people come to and stay. Now, again, they had uh, all kinds of artifacts, even back to the Wally Indians that were here prior to the Spanish and their attempt to colonize Georgia. And uh, they, they even had some artifacts from, uh, from that time period. And they had those on display here. And then, of course, uh, once the, the British began to show interest in Georgia, they were able to push out the Spanish. And eventually, Georgia became a colony of Britain in about in the 1730s, I think, is when James Oglethorpe came here. And uh, we became a, a colony here of ships, model of a ship from that time period, what they would have looked like as, uh, as they brought colonists here to the colony of Georgia. And then of course, eventually, once we had the American Revolution, Georgia became one of the original 13 states after we signed the Declaration of Independence and gained our freedom from Britain. And they had some artifacts from that time period and some of the weapons that might have been used during the American Revolution on display there. All right, and then they get into the Civil War, of course, the, the south and especially the, the coast of Georgia, there were a lot of plantations that, that were based on slavery uh, and land, uh, being able to use a lot of land and being able to grow cash crops like particularly cotton that we would ship to Britain. And these plantations were where most of the money was tied up uh, in the south. And so the south eventually seceded from the Union once it became apparent that they were going to probably eventually outlaw slavery. And as the war started in the early 1860s, a fort was built here, right here on this site. And this shows the development of the fort and how big it was. And it was built from sand. They didn't have time to build it from brick and mortar. So they built it from dirt primarily. And then it, there was some brick and mortar used, but this was a fast and easy way to get a fort built that was very difficult to destroy. Uh, that shows some of the artifacts from the battle that was fought here. Um, of course, the other major battle here was, was the fight, uh, or not really a fight, was when the uh, Montauk, USS Montauk sunk to Nashville. Now this shows a model of what one of those ironclads like the USS Montauk would have looked like. Uh, they basically look like a submarine would look now. They're co they were covered with, with, with metal, steel, and the shells in, would just bounce off of them. You really couldn't sink, uh, sink them unless you got one stranded in an area where it couldn't move, uh, like on a sandbar or something like that. So that kind of shows what the outside of that the Montauk might have looked like. And uh, again, like I said, you could shoot it with shells and they would just bounce off and uh, the Montauk was just completely covered with metal. So, uh, and then the, of course the, the blockade runner would carry things like weapons, clothes, uh, liquor, food, anything, especially industrial items that the South could not produce in 
in enough numbers on their own since their economy was based on agriculture and cash crops and slavery. So uh, this is a model of the CSS Nashville which would have brought these items and then try to evade the Union Navy as it tried to get to ports like Savannah or Brunswick or somewhere like that in the south. So they could unload these things for the, for the Confederate cause. Now here are some more artifacts, bottles and things like that that they found, uh, I guess from the river, from where the, the Nashville sank. Uh, this is the president of the Confederacy in the United States. Uh, this is, um, again, some of the Civil War artifacts, uh, flags, things like that, that, that were uh, for the state of Georgia and for the Confederacy. Uh, more artifacts from the sinking of the Nashville there. You can see a few of those that they found, they had on display. I was really impressed with the museum. It's a very nice little museum. You could see everything really well. It's easy to get around, easy, you know, plenty of information to read. Uh, this is an actual picture from when the fort was active. Um, there were several battles, three or four battles there, where the Montauk came and tried to shell the fort. And you can see there again pictures in the background of what the fort might have looked like. That's how the Confederates may have dressed. Things that you might have found in their campsite or things that they found as artifacts here um, from the Civil War. And uh, this is uh, the commander, I believe, you know, that, that when Sherman came here had to evacuate Savannah with 10,000 troops and they just surrendered the city to Sherman as he went from Atlanta all the way to Savannah fighting, fighting several battles. Um, here's some more pictures of the fort. The battles prior to the March to the Sea, which is in 1864, were in 1862 and 1863. Um, those mainly were just the uh, Union ships trying to shell the fort. It didn't have any effect on the fort since the fort was made of dirt and they could just uh, pile the dirt back up. It really didn't destroy anything. I think they had one battle where they killed the cat that was the pet of all the soldiers there. There were about 250 soldiers. Uh, and then one battle that killed the commander. There's a rendition of the surrender uh, of, the, of the Confederate Army at the end of the Civil War which was shortly after the attack where Sherman was able to take this fort. Uh, here's the Civil War sites that the state has uh, historic sites that you can go see all throughout the state of Georgia. I've been to a lot of these and uh, they're all different. This one, th now here's another room. They have like a video that talks about what life was like for the soldiers during that time period here at this fort. Uh, a lot of the weaponry on display and that back there is where the fort is. I'll show you that here in a few minutes. Uh, but they, had a, they did a really good job of displaying everything that these soldiers might have had access to or would have used or uh, the Union Army might have used or the Confederate Army might have used. A, a pretty good collection of weapons. Now as you go out the back, you know, and you approach the site, uh, you know, you get a really good you, know, you get the sights and the sounds and all that kind of thing. Straight across here out in the river is where the Nashville uh, met its fate out there and that's where a lot of those artifacts came from. Uh, they had an observation deck that I climbed up on out of curiosity to look out. The whole site is less than a mile walk and you get to see the whole battlefield, the whole fort. You know, it's not like going to Chickamauga or somewhere where the, the, the battle was in a huge area and it would take you all day to go around and see, you know, it would take days to see all of it. This is all in one place, so it's really nice um, if you want to see this. Now, you go into the fort, you start seeing how the, the walls are piled up and made of dirt, and uh, they have some, some um, things they have rebuilt, like little cabins, you know, to try to show you what it may look like, that house. Uh, you know, it was a plantation style house to show you where the officers might have lived. They had everything marked and everything explained. So you could go in and you could read exactly what all these things were. And uh, this was a, you know, the, a display of what the cabin might look like that maybe the sergeants, the non-commissioned officers, uh, where they might live. And uh, this is a blacksmith station, which was a vital, vital job for both armies 
um, to be able to take care of all the smithing needs for the weapons and the horseshoes and just countless to all the tools everything they used uh, the blacksmith had his hands in um, the pay this is the path going up to the fort they had a moat but the moat never had water it never would hold water so they just had stakes in it so you'd have to go over this hill down into the moat through the stakes and up up the wall to get to the fort was the idea uh, and of course the fort had batteries every so many feet there was a battery where there were cannon and places to store you know gunpowder and shells and all that kind of thing so this lets you see what the middle of the fort would look like um, the soldiers didn't like live in the fort they lived outside the fort but this is where they would fight a battle and the back side of the fort is where you did not have all the you know batteries and weapons and stuff um, there's a designer this is a, a cannon overlooking the river right here and it could easily fire all the way across with no problem whatsoever and hit probably whatever it was aiming at with probably 20 percent accuracy or something like that um, but anyway you could go around see all the sites and they have areas where they stored things and this is an interesting section it's called a hot shot um, uh, a hot shot oven and what they would do is they would put the cannonballs in there to heat them up here's the front of it where you could heat them up so they would be so hot that when they hit the wooden ships they would catch the ship on fire but of course the ships that they were shooting at the one they mainly shot at was the Montauk which was the ironclad so all the cannonballs did was bounce off the side of it so really it didn't <clears throat> it didn't do any good um, those things were pretty much just impervious to, to the shelling that the Confederates had. Uh, this is what it looks like straight down off the top of the fort. You can see how steep it is. So if you attacked it from the river, you would have to you know, be able to get through the shelling, get to that, and then get up the sides to attack the fort. Straight across there is where Sherman sat on, on a mill roof and watched the defeat of the fort. Right out there, there were, um, they had built a wall that went way out into the river so you couldn't get close to the fort. Uh, here's some more of the batteries. There's the Old Glory that, of course, was erected as soon as the fort was defeated in a, in a short battle. There were about 250 Confederates that were defeated by probably about a thousand Union troops. The battle didn't last very long. There were hundreds of casualties, of course, but um, the, the soldiers were artillerymen primarily. They weren't infantry soldiers that would fight uh, really this kind of battle so the Union was able to land troops um, you know, this is the back side of the fort where you would bring in wagons you know for the supplies and stuff like that they had to have a section like that probably had it walled off uh, but the Union came uh, from the back side and attacked from there uh, with like I said about a thousand troops they had landmines that were everywhere that killed a lot of the troops uh, that, that were casualties and Sherman made the soldiers from the Confederate fort go out and disarm all those after the battle because he didn't want his soldiers to have to do it. Here's a mortar. Uh, these would fire the biggest shells uh, but they still didn't help you know the Confederates defend the fort. Uh, once we got to 1864 and actual Union troops came here and attacked and took the fort. Um, now of course after that Savannah was pretty much over um, they couldn't defend Savannah from, from Sherman, so they just evacuated and let him have the city. So, um, this is a really great place to go see. You get to see a lot of artifacts. It's not a really long walk. Uh, it's an easy little tour. So, I hope you guys get to come by and see it. And um, just thanks for watching Nichols Retirement Empire as we go through and we look at some of these sites in the state of Georgia and uh, we may go to some other states. I have been to other states in the past and looked at some sites. Uh, but anyway, if you guys have any questions, just let me know, and thanks for watching.